this feels a little sort of Miss America and can't we all get along, but I um World peace, right? World peace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I would have said something very, very different um, 10 or 15 years ago um, because I, I love philosophy and I love theology and, and sort of the, um, the intellectual wrestle with, with these questions about who God is and um, you know, what he or she or they want of us. Um, and I was, among many other majors, I was a philosophy major for a, a long, that was one of the ones that stuck for a pretty long time. And, um, and I do love the sort of intellectual foment of trying to figure out questions that matter in a thoughtful way. Um, but I have to say that in terms of, of sort of real world conflict and especially real world solutions, that I have come to a, a really different feeling about what um, what makes for human peace, and um, it has something to do with with having um, had a baby. I was very growing up. I sort of lived from from here up. I had a very intellectual family, and you know, we were all about ideas and books, and um, and I sort of liked the Christian idea of heaven as a place where you're freed from bodily passions, and the, you know, you shuffle off this obnoxious carcass that constrains your spirit and commune, you know, um, soul to soul. And then I had babies, and I remember sitting in church one week holding my six-month-old and thinking, He doesn't have any thoughts. He doesn't, you know, I, there's no soul to soul communion here. But this 20 pounds of flesh is dear to me in ways that I, that nothing else ever will be in the world. And I, I went home and wrote in my journal that I was afraid I was going to hell because I loved my baby more than I could ever love God. <laughs> um, and, um, and that was, shocking to me and and um, and I didn't love him in some metaphysical way I loved holding him and touching him and smelling him and over the years as I've sort of taken that into my religious life I'm more and more convinced that um, that the needs of the bodies that we meet the, the people who, whose faces we see, that responding to their faces and to their needs of their human bodies is, is the fundamental essence of, of religion. And, um, and that all of our talk about what we think is, is mostly a way of talking about, of either hiding from the necessity of attending to our bodies or figuring out a better way to do it. But that, that real religion is um, feeding people. So this afternoon, for instance, I, I'm listening to all the talk going on and also thinking everyone in this room is hungry or tired. And the way that they're thinking about religion has everything to do with they're being hungry or tired or sore from sitting down or, you know, that we can't extract this discussion and have it on some other plane where, where we're about propositions or thoughts or ar arguments. Um, and I, I, I hope that's not too facile. I mean, maybe it is to say it doesn't really matter what you think as long as you feed each other. But I really think that might be it. Um, and that um, what religions tell us about our bodies and what they mean is is a place where we can we can talk that what we do with with death with dying with birth 
in, with how we ritualize those transitions and how we um, how we make bodies mean in in language um, might be the best place to start with interreligious dialogue. Mm-hmm.